everyone. Well, it's uh, Sunday evening. I took most of the day off and I took wifey out for a nice meal into the big city, the capital city, St. John's, and we had a nice drive back. And So she's in cleaning up her room where she does all her graphics. So I said, well, if you're going at that, I'm coming back out at the BX. So basically what I'm going to try to attempt to do today, or this evening, is I'm going to try to put some uh, grease nipples in various places of the grapple. Now, in one sense it probably don't need it here because they used a bolt here and there's a fair bit of play in it, as you can see. But the way I look at it, if I put grease nipples in it now, I'll prevent future wear and plus I'll also prevent this from seizing. You know, this, this should technically last a lifetime. So if, if I can prevent it from seizing up and, and getting rusty within this area, well, the job is well worth it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just take the camera now, I'm going to bring it over, and I'm going to show you what I intend to do here. So, let's see here. Like I say, there's bolts. There's a bolt gone through here. This is not really a good, you know, tight fit. But I'm going to take out this bolt, I'm going to put it in the lathe, and I'm going to cut a, uh, a groove in the middle of the bolt. So that way, uh, when I put the grease nipple here, the grease will have a, a channel to get in and out. These here, however, are a nice fit. They work well. But the problem is here, is you can't put a grease nipple on this. So what I'm intending to do is I'm going to take this pin out altogether and I'm going to cut this section off. Then I'm going to drill it out halfway, just a small hole. Then I'm going to cut a relief uh, groove inside here. Then I'm going to drill it down through here and I'm going to put a grease nipple outside and I won't be using a cotter pin anymore, I'm going to be using a uh, C-clip to hold the pin in. So the grease nipple, C-clip, that way when I grease it, the grease will come out through here. Um, don't know if I'm going to bother to do the bottom because well, there's really not much movement on the bottom, but then again, I suppose it could still seize. So the heck with it. Yeah, we're going to do the, the bottom and the top and the two bolts. So let's get to it. keep the tap straight on your work. If you look at this thing here, it's like a bit but it's spring loaded. And what it does is it pushes it pushes the uh, tap up against the uh, part that needs to be tapped and it keeps it straight. I'll give you an example of that now uh, very shortly. So as you can see I have some pressure up against the tap here now because of the spring-loaded shaft and uh, I'm still doing it by hand but it, it helps the chuck helps keep the uh, tap straight in the workpiece so I just thought that's uh, something cool you might not have seen before the spring-loaded now there's males and there's females in this type it depends on the head of the tap but great system okay the middle setup I'm gonna drill the hole down through there so the grease will be able to get out Hey guys, here you go. That's one pin done. That's how it's going to look. So the regular cotter pin that they had will go on the inside. And of course the uh, grease nipple will go on the outside with the C-clip holding it in. Well, I got four to six done. I don't think I'm going to bother to do the bottom ones because there's very little or almost no movement on the bottom. So there's really nothing there to wear. So I may just uh, forget about doing those, but the top ones are done, as you can see. 
and are greased. You can see the grease coming out. So it'll, uh, you know, and they got a lot of movement up there. That's my furnace. Makes a lot of noise. It's just blowing off steam. And you can see the, uh, the grease nipples as well. So uh, I think it's an improvement. I don't know. I don't know what they had in mind by not putting grease nipples on it. I guess they figured it would never wear out. But anyway, I'm still happy with the grapple. And uh, oh, I was telling uh, I was telling you before about this bracket having to turn. No, this bracket here having to turn this bracket over to give me some extra hose down here. And somebody reported that, told me that they didn't have to do that with theirs. And I realized why they didn't have to do it with theirs. Theirs didn't have the uh, quick change attachment on it. And that's another three or four inches. And that's the reason why I had to uh, turn my bracket around and uh, he didn't. So if you don't have the, if you don't have the quick change from uh, Kubota, you won't have to change that bracket around. But if you do, that bracket should look like it does, does there now. So, that's just a, an observation on my part. So folks, that's going to be it for this little video. Uh, you're probably tired of looking at 40 minute videos and 30 minute videos, so we're going to make this one real short. Everybody must be saying, thank God. But anyway, the next, uh, the next video is going to be on this fella. And that's going to be the uh, new filter system, new filtration system for uh, the Kubota BX. It's off of a Grandel, and I'm going to adapt it to the BX. Uh, just one minute, I'll show you what I got to do. Uh, it's over here. Okay, what I got to do is I'm going to leave the top filter because the BX got two of these filters. So I'm going to leave the top one on, which is a new one here, up by the injection pump. And I'm going to uh, eliminate the lower one. I'm going to have this on the outside of the tractor. And I'm going to replace it, of course, with a new filter itself, new cartridge. Then I'm possibly going to build a guard around it or whatnot. It's got a fuel cock on it, which the BX don't have anyway. So it's going to be coming in handy. And then, of course, I can visually just look at it and and see if it's got any water or dirt in it. So it should be a lot better than what's there now. Plus what's there now, it's up under the skid pan. So I can't see it in order to service it. I gotta drop three piece skid pan to get at it. And of course, you know when those things are gonna give out, when you need it, you're probably up in the woods somewhere. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna be the next video. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. And uh, I got other things coming up down the road. Try to keep it interesting for you. Appreciate you watching. And uh, if you got any questions, ask them. Got any comments, make them. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, that keeps us interested in doing these things. Nobody's subscribing. Can't keep at it. Just don't have the interest. But uh, we do appreciate the, the regular guys who's been posting. Some really good questions too, uh, by the way. So uh, thanks a million. And we'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye for now.